Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here in behind the camera, man of mystery. Apparently he was spotted last week inside a hubcap. That's Mitch. Welcome back. Uh, we have a tiger cub on its side here and we need to work on the ignition. We have a couple things to do. We have to mount a degree wheel and I have a piece that fits in there. This gets used off the Excelsior, but this has to mount onto here. And I have a piece of aluminum, which I cut out of inch plate because I didn't have any round stock. I have a sketch of what we need to make here. So there we go, there's my sketch. So I guess we're gonna sort of plunge right into that. Uh, we also have an issue that the, the stator which bolts on is not quite lined up with the rotor. So I spent money yesterday on an end mill, a $27 end mill. And what that's going to do is we're going to mount this in the rotary table and going to center. What I'm going to do to center, see this? I've got a piece of quite hard steel and you see that red line there? I'd use a, a red sharpie. Can you see how it fits right into the hole? It's a taper. That's what I'm going to use to center the hole. I'll center all four holes first and I'll mark it on a piece of paper, use the digital readout. And then I'll go back with the end mill, find this, I, I know where the center is now on, on the digital readout. And then I'm gonna move it, I don't know, I'm thinking eight, 10, maybe 12 thou. And because I need to be able to move this a little bit like that, in that direction. So how that happened, I don't know. I was careful, but we had a flywheel that was bent, old engine, inexperienced machinist, you name it, we got it. So anyway, first of all, we're gonna go over to the lathe. I have, where did I put it? There we go. I'm gonna make an arbor. So this is gonna get mounted on the arbor. It's got an eight millimeter hole. This is 6061, that's all it is. Nothing, nothing fancy. Swapping tools for my radius tool. This is a 3 16 radius tool. So the, the total size is 3 8 Okay, this piece has to fit into there, so I need to put a little bit of a recess just so that it, it locates it. And then the screws will hold it onto this. Okay. And I want to take off the burr. Will that work? I'm not sure. So this piece goes on to there. Can you see how this is not flat? Can you see there's like a lumpy bit right there where my finger is and there's these little dots sticking up? So what we need to do is to hold this in the chuck and take a skim and then we'll also take a little skim right off the, off the corner of the hex because this is gonna get bored. So this fits right over that and it can't move. We don't want that to move. 
and then see those two holes we just did that's where the allen screws go through and it bolts onto those two holes there so that's what we're doing i hope that makes sense to you <laughs> It's all faced. So now we have to make a bore here that's that size so that it locates. And it also has to be high enough. It has to be about 7 16 of an inch because the nut sticks up. So it's not just this depth. Oh, look at that. That's a good fit. So this is why I drilled the holes first. Can you see that? Can you see how the holes are right in the middle of the bore? I, I knew that would happen. And if I do the bore first and then I, I drill the holes, the holes are going to go in. So that's no good. So that turned out fine. So what we need to do now, the Allen screws are going to get sunk into here. So we're going to countersink on the drill press for the Allen screws. So do you see this? This is a regular drill that I sharpened so it countersinks inside. So let's see how this works. That's what happens when they make these too big. Okay, I'll show you how you fix this. So let's see if it fits. There we go. Okay, so you see how it still has to come down a bit more because this has to be underneath the surface there. There we go, it's below the surface. That's great. Okay, we'll do this side. There we go, right below the surface. So the last thing we have to do is we have to drill. I don't I don't need to use all six holes, but we need to use three of these holes. So we have to have, have to go back into the rotary table and and drill three holes. They're gonna be five millimeter threads. Every 120, we're doing three holes. So it's 240 and then you also line up the zero here with that line because otherwise you'll be off very slightly. It's a five millimeter threaded hole so the tap drill is 4.2 millimeters. You knew that right? What I'm doing here I've got the tap in the drill press and this is a good way to make it start so that it's perpendicular but you need a foot switch that's my foot switch so I can when it starts to go in I can switch it off if you're only using a hand switch I don't know how you do it so you have to you have to switch it off at the right time otherwise the tap goes too far down and you snap it then you start all over again so got my anchor lube 
so we line it up. Here we go. Yeah, I switched it off just in time. Now we're going to go over to the bench vise and I'll finish that. But that is started perpendicular. If I start it by hand, my eye is pretty good, but hard to get it perfect. This way, perfect. We're going to install the rotor now. And there's a key here, so. The fat washer that I made. So I can't use the torque wrench because there's not really any way to hold it. So I have an impact gun, so I'm gonna give it a little shot and hopefully that's good. Great. I'd say that's tight. Okay, so what we need to do now, as I explained earlier, this has to move up here. And see those red lines? That's how how I know which way it has to move. What I did was I took a feeler gauge and I put it into around here and it goes in sort of like to here and to here so that so I took the center of that and it this this needs to go this way. So these holes need to come back because this fits on like like so, see how now there's a little bit of play. So it's not like a super precision, but it was getting too close here. See how it goes down to that red felt pen line? That's pretty centered there. I've got the four holes. So this is this hole. So X, we need X and Y. So X is 0 0.917 and Y is 1.300. Okay, so that one's done. So now I need to hold this one down. Then I take out that screw and that's basically, I have to go around to all four, then I switch to the end mill. Oops. Pretty good. Seems to go down there. I haven't done this before. This is a bit new. But it makes sense to me. And hopefully it's good. I think that's pretty close. Okay. Okay, so that's the one we'll start with right there. There we go. So it's hitting at nine. When I move at nine, uh, you can you can definitely hear it. So moved it about nineteen thou. See, we got some slop going there now. I'll play. Okay, that's one. Got three more to go. All right. We're gonna see how it all fits together now. I sure hope this all works. This all has to feed through. There's a hole here. I gotta take some silicon and seal this up if everything works. They don't leave you a lot of space at all. And this, someone's made the hole bigger too. When I tried it last time, eight didn't work. Eight got stuck right here. It does go all the way around. So there we go. 
eight thou goes all the way around. So we're going to call that good. We'll tighten this. We'll put the wires on. And then we'll mount a degree wheel. Okay, so this goes on now. Well, look. See, see how this is higher and I groove that out? I didn't even think of that. Well, that works. It just misses there. That was good I did that. Okay. See here, I've got a worn out screwdriver that works perfectly here. So this is what opens up the slot. Because this has to hold pretty well. And that fits onto here. There we go, like that. Okay, so now it now it's holding. There's a slot there and you, you do up the six mil Allen screw. So how this works, how you find top dead center, I made this out of a spark plug. Maybe this is too long, I don't know. This goes down and when you bring this around, that's where the piston is touching on. And you go one way and then you go the other way and then you, you set the zero or top dead center right in the middle. So let's, let's do that. So when you come around, there, can you hear that? That's when the piston is touching there. Here is top dead center. I'm gonna put a circle around that. There is, there is top dead center. So we are coming, we are coming up to top dead center. So this has to be moved. This needs to be over here. So that's why we'll, Loosen this off now. Okay, so that's going to move now. So we're going to go over this way. We're going to go to 50. We'll see what happens. So make that tight. We'll check it again. So we're coming up to top dead center. And we are, we are 50 degrees apart. So what I'll do now is, I don't want to go around the whole way. I'll take this out. We'll go back over top dead center. Then we'll go back. See what happened there? I just estimated 50 because I've, I've never used these in a cub before, only Excelsius. So we went from 50, we went to 46. So what it needs to be is 48. So we're going to loosen this. You see what's happening now? And then we'll. Okay, see that it hits on the 50, so I'm going to move it past. To it's at 48 now. We'll tighten that. So that's 48. And that's also 48. So when I take this out now, when I go to zero, that is precisely top dead center. There's no guessing. There's no dial indicator going down a piston bore, a spot plug hole at an angle. That is top dead center. I hope you have enjoyed our episode. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us coffees, it fuels our channel. Thanks for hanging out in the shop. See you next time. Take care.